Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Sam Carlton. I'm the software developer of Photoparada. In this video on Photoparada, I plan to share with you the different ways in which Photoparada will allow you to ingest images into Photoparada. The design philosophy of Photoparada is to be very, very flexible and to allow you to ingest images how you like rather than forcing you to ingest images the Photoparada way. So, the first method Photoparada has of ingesting images is where Photoparada copies images from the memory card. So I'm going to copy them into the folder with that name right here. So when we select on the image gallery, you'll notice up here the ingest button turned blue. So we select on that and it, it detects that we've got a memory card in the E drive. So we select on that and click OK. That pops up the ingest file name selection dialog lots of power here. Um, the file name, that is how Photoprod is going to rename the images. Well, on very rare occasion I have someone ask me, say, hey, I don't want to rename my images. I want to use the actual file names that are on the memory card coming from the camera. That's what this uh, bottom option right here, use original file name is. If you click that, you'll notice everything else is grayed out. It simply uses the original file name. But let's actually talk about the power of this dialog because I highly recommend that you always use, you always allow Photopara to do the renaming. The reason for that is since cameras can, uh, the file name on the camera maxes out at 9,999, and most of us start an event somewhere um, above image one, um, it's very likely that your images will roll over. So by using Photopara's renaming, um, approach. Uh, you don't have to worry about that uh, image number rolling over on you and things being out of sequence. So first of all the file name. The whole concept is we've got this concept down here called variables. Notice how it starts with a bracket and then uh, a word or a name or symbols inside of it and closing bracket. Day is for the, the day of the, the month. Today is the May 8th. So DDMMYY is um, uh, the eighth day, fifth month of 2014. Here with the four Ys, it's um, uh, the full year, 2014. Um, the event name, uh, if you want to include that in the file name, uh, we, as we scroll down here, we've got a couple of unique ones. We've got three of them that are green, the event sequence number, and the idea behind this is that this number starts at one for the whole event, and goes up and it never repeats. Uh, the file name which is the actual the existing file name and then the file number which is the last four um, uh, characters of the file name which traditionally when you're uh, complying with the, the way cameras save things is going to be the, the image number. The file part is the first four letters of the, uh, the original file name as we scroll down here, there's some other things. There's things like uh, we can do a the image gallery name. You could use an image gallery sequence where in every single image gallery the number starts over. Um, and then we've got a couple other date, year options here. So the way we use this is right now as, as we look up at the top, we'll notice that photo product comes set with a default of it prefixes the year, month, day, dash the event sequence number. Let me touch on these these four that are green. The reason why they're green is that they change with every single image. You've got to have at least one of these green variables in your file name for the OK button to be enabled. Otherwise, if you don't, all your images would have the same name and Photoprod is not going to allow you to do that. So you have to use one of the green ones to make sure that every single file name changes. So um, back up here with file name and then the event sequence number which like I said starts at zero starts at one and goes up from there. Down here where it says file name that shows us an example of what the file name is. So if, if we were at event sequence number um, 175 that would be our file name. The display name is what we see on the KVS. The reason why they're different has to do with this right here, the start KVS file name at character. 
Right now I'm saying start at character 9, which is the 0. So I'm actually trimming off the first 9 characters. Um, typically, uh, uh, typically, only having 4 digits is not going to be enough for an event, so let's increase this to 6. Notice here how the file name added two more zeros. Display name shows those two, two more zeros. Um, I, would, I would recommend using um, five or six digits for sequence numbers unless you were going to use the Im image gallery sequence number, then I could see you using uh, three or four. Um, w the final thing I want to talk about is this remove characters from the end of the KVS file name. That is really useful in case we want to stick stuff onto the end of the file name. A good example of where you might want to do that is that if you want to track uh, what photographer took which picture, best way to do that is to put on the end of the file name their initials. So I, myself being Sam Carlton would be underscore SC. But notice here in the display name it shows underscore SC. Your customers probably don't need to see that. So if we increase this here to three, you'll notice how we just trimmed off those last three characters. So the original file name has it, but the display name doesn't. So that's what the point, that's the purpose of the remove characters from the end of the file name. So let me show you another actually more useful way of using that. So rather than manually typing it in and having to remember to come and change that every single time you ingest images, you go off and ask your photographer to change the um, in their camera, change the first part of the file name to their initials. So down here on my camera, it spits out EHC. So you can just simply put the file part at the very end. So if we click here, so the cursor is at the very end, and if we double click on file part, voila, we now see under EHC underscore. Well, we still see the E here, so let's increase that to 4. Um, and then, actually, for this test, I'm going to want to get rid of the, uh, the file data at the beginning, so I'm going to set the cursor here and just backspace. One of the reasons why I want to, one of the other reasons why I want to do that is show you this display name error. The reason why there's an error is because we no longer have enough characters. All we have to do is take this back down to 0 and we get to see what we expect to see. Click OK and now the images are copied to the memory card and then you'll see here that this is blue. It's blue because what's happening is Photoprod is telling you, hey, I've detected the fact that there are new images here. I'm going to start syncing them so that you can see them on the viewing station here momentarily. That brings us down to the sync idle. And here within 30 seconds, this will go from sync idle and there we go files left to sync. It's now taking all the original images, making smaller images that'll be seen on the viewing station. We do this so that we keep the viewing stations really, really um, quick and responsive by only displaying small images. There, there we're done with uh, those 78 images and Photoprada's back to black. Life is good. That is the first method of ingestion. The other method of ingestion is simpler to explain but opens up a lot more possibilities. That's where you use an external program to copy images from the memory card. So in that case what we do is, and there's 101 different ways of getting there. Over here in path, if you hover over that, that's the full path to the image gallery folder on your hard drive. If you just click on it, it will open up for you. So this is where we want to have the third-party program copy the images to. So what I'm going to do here is I th I've got another... don't want that. Let me open up another window. And over here, the E drive. drive drill down a little bit. And there are images. I'm going to do a Control a to select them all. And I'm just going to copy, drag them over and copy them. You'll notice how that's turned blue. And again, we're waiting for a moment and we, with, again, within 30 seconds, we'll see Sync Idle become active. The whole point is 
every single image gallery is a hot folder. Photo Prada is monitoring every single image gallery for whenever you add, delete, or edit an image and it will detect that and within 30 seconds, there we go, the syncing has begun. It will resync that um, those images and update the KVS stations appropriately. So if you're in a situation where you want to get the images in here quickly, but you've got some downtime and you want to go pull out the auto the out of focus images, feel free to fire up your favorite program to browse through the images that, that you normally use to define the, the bad images and delete them. And you can delete them directly from here. Photo product within 30 seconds will detect that and remove them from the viewing stations. No big deal. This also opens up other um, possibilities for you that are beyond um, Photo Prada in terms of how to ingest images, such as we've got customers out there that will use Windows file sharing to share the original images folder you can copy images from another computer. If you're not familiar with Windows file sharing, that simply allows another computer to access these folders. A little bit of troubleshooting of in ingesting images. I've got another memory card here that has some images on it. But you'll notice that, that they're right there in the root of the drive. Right, very top level folder. I just simply took some images, copied them over. Let's try to ingest them into the troubleshooting um, section. So I'm going to select here, and this time I'm going to right click. But you'll notice we get this error message here that says there's no memory card in the system. Well, as we both know, there is. So what's going on? What's happening is memory card is not complying with the design rules for the camera file system. What that means, basically, in a nutshell, and I, I talk about it here a little bit, is that here there's supposed to be a folder called DC. Uh, DCIM and within this folder another folder and the images are found within that folder this is going to be the, the this design rule for camera file systems is how all cameras operate so whenever you capture images on a camera it's going to put it into a folder that's inside a DCIM so photo so that's where photo product goes looking for images on memory cards. If they're anywhere else, it won't find them. So, you're asking Sam, hey, I don't want to have to recreate all these folders. I still want to ingest images from this memory card. What do I do? Well, pretty simple. Simply uh, click on the select directory folder. Button, sorry. Um, from the this computer, browse down and we know it's the E drive. Select that and click OK. And then we're back to uh, what we're used to seeing. Notice here how the file names do not comply with standard image file names. I've already prefixed the date onto them. So in this particular case, I'm actually going to say use original file name. Click OK. Copies the images over. You'll notice how we're, it's blue here. We started syncing before the copy was done, so it only started syncing the images that were it knew about. When this syncing gets done, it'll pick up the rest of the images that were copied and ingest those guys. So they were down to one. Okay, so within 30 seconds this guy will kick in and sync the rest of the images. And, um, and that's it. The other troubleshooting issue people frequently run into is they're capturing in RAW and not JPEG. By the way, there we go, we're syncing the rest of the images. Um, so they capture in RAW and not JPEG. Photo product cannot and does not process or work with the contents of raw files. To, if you want to capture in raw, you're welcome to. Please make sure you set your cameras to capture raw plus JPEG. What Photo product does is it will move the raw files and rename the raw files in unison with the JPEG file. But it uses the JPEG file during the sync process to get the images for the viewing station. So if you want to shoot RAW, please make sure you set your camera to shoot RAW plus JPEG. That's the end of the video. Thank, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch it. If you've got more questions about Photo Parada, you're welcome to come check us out at www.miltonstreet.com or you can email me directly at carlton at miltonstreet.com. Again, thanks for taking the time to watch our video and have a great day.
拜拜。